Okay, so let's take a look now at S2 members PHP API constants. And before we get into this, let's just clarify what exactly a PHP constant is. So to do that, I'm going to switch tabs here for just a moment. We're going to go straight to the PHP documentation on constants. And we see here that it states a constant is an identifier or a name for a simple value. And as the name suggests, constant, the value cannot change during the execution of the script. It also goes on to say that a constant is case sensitive by default and that by convention a constant identifier is always uppercase. Okay, so the important thing to realize here is that a constant is an identifier or a name for a simple value, so it's very much like a variable. The difference is that a constant is not preceded by a dollar sign, as you would see with a variable name. A constant is just a name. And the other difference is that it is going to be read only, because once a constant is defined, that value cannot change during the execution of the script. Okay, so now that we understand what a constant is, let's go back to this other tab again and take a look. This is quite a lengthy section because uh, S2 member makes several constants available to you as a developer or as an advanced site owner and you will be able to read these constants or use them to output information within your theme just using these PHP code snippet examples. Okay, so for example this is the S2 member version that is currently installed. Okay, it will always be given in string format. This is a true or false value which would indicate whether or not a user is logged in. Okay, in other words, if they're logged in and they have an access level greater than or equal to zero, this constant will give you a true or false value based on the same information, whether they're logged in or not, but in addition, it checks if they're logged in as a member. In other words, are they at an access level greater than or equal to one, which would indicate a premium paid level, one through four. So. You can see how constants could be used, and I'm going to give you another example going on down here to the first name. Okay, This is one that a lot of people will use in their login welcome page. So if I was to copy this, and I can see here in the documentation it says that this may output something like John, or whatever their first name is. So how could I use this? Well, I'm going to switch over here to my list of pages. And this is my login welcome page. So this is the first page that S2 member will redirect a member to after they log into the site. So let's click Edit. And what I would like to do here is have a line that pops up that says something like, Hello, Jason. Okay, or whatever the current name, the first name is of the current user who is logged in. So let's update this. And click to view the page. And there we have it. You see it says, Hello, Jason. Okay, so that's one example. I'm going to switch tabs again. It's one example of how one of these constants could be used, and you can use them in different ways. For example, a developer might use them to read configuration values, such, such as uh, the current user downloads allow. Uh, another one would be the modification page URL, which we covered in a previous segment of this video. Okay, another one would be the options, the membership options page URL. Okay, so not only does this, do these constants provide information about the current user, but they also have, we also have constants in here that provide information about the current configuration of S2 member so that additional actions or plugins could be written on top of the S2 member framework. Okay, just using these constants alone. Okay, I'm going to scroll on down beyond the constants into the next subsection, which is JS API Globals. And you'll notice that this is a very brief section. And the reason it's brief is because the JavaScript API, which is automatically loaded by S2 member into your theme, makes available all of the PHP API constants with the same exact names, the same exact uh, uh, typecasting, but in the JavaScript API, they are introduced as globals. So JavaScript re re refers to them as globals as opposed to PHP, which refers to them as constants. But these are essentially the same thing, and this makes it possible for a developer or for an advanced site owner to write AJAX applications or to use something like a jQuery framework in order to uh, enhance DHTML with information pulled directly from the S2 member configuration or about a particular user. Okay, so these two are very powerful. 
Now, in addition to these two methods uh, of building on top of S2Member or pulling information out of its configuration, S2Member also makes over 250 hooks and filters available throughout its framework. Now, this is extremely powerful, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time here explaining why this is important. Okay, if you are, if you are an advanced site owner who needs to modify S2Member in some very advanced way, in other words, let's say that you have downloaded the S2Member plugin, and you have watched these videos, and something that I have said in one of these videos or something that you have read in the documentation has triggered something in your mind that says, oh, I need to change that because I need a certain behavior to act differently. So let's say you go into the code, you find the section that needs to be changed, and before you change it, you say, oh, well, maybe I should use a hook or a filter instead. This is important. If you at all possible, try to use a hook or a filter because hooks and filters can be integrated without modifying the S2 member source code. So if you can accomplish that, and you should be able to, given the number of hooks and filters that are included with S2 member, then the upgrade in the future will not, will not cause your changes to be lost. In other words, any changes that you make will survive the update of the S2 member framework. Okay? Now, you can search inside of your S2 member directory under includes, functions, and, and all of the files that make up the hooks and the filters and the functions of S2 member are located in this directory. And to save some time, you can search for do action or apply filters, and that will give you a broad look at all of the actions and filters that are available within S2 member, and also the variables that are passed through some of these actions and filters. Okay, so this, all, of, all three of these sections are designed for uh, a very advanced usage, someone who is going to modify the S2 member plugin or integrate it directly with a theme in one way or another. Okay, so that is the API scripting section for S2 member, the plugin for WordPress.